here come the teams uh, through the uh, guard of honour of the dancing girls led out actually by the eagle the bold eagle went uh, flying from one end of the pitch to the other at the uh, head of the two lines of players uh, Paddy McCarthy leading out Crystal Palace in red and blue striped shirts and Luke Chambers leads out Forrest they're all in black today in the uh, away strip today just the green flash across the shoulders and at the top of the socks Forrest then with just the one change Gareth McCleary's in Scott Wooden drops to the substitutes bench Chris Gunter moves back to right back Lee Camping goal back four of Chris Gunter Luke Chambers Joel Lynch and Greg Cunningham midfield of Gareth McCleary Guy Moussi Adlen Gediura and Andy Reid and up front Raddy Majewski plays behind Dexter Blackstock as far as Crystal Palace are concerned well Dougie Friedman has rung the changes from midweek uh, when uh, by all accounts they didn't play particularly well but they did have to completely reshuffle their side they have Julian Speroni in goal so often a thorn in Forest side uh, it looks as if it'll be Nathaniel Klein, Paddy McCarthy, the skipper, Dean Moxie and David Wright across the back four. Looks like three in midfield of Kagisho Dikachoy, Owen Garvin and Jonathan Parr. And then three up front. The wide men will be Wilfried Zaha and Sean Scannell. And through the middle is Glenn Murray, who's the man who scored the goal at the city ground, which beat Forrest earlier in the season as Palace today look for a first ever double against the Reds. Now Lynch under pressure from Murray, clears long, looking for Blackstock. Blackstock gets up, tries to head down for Majewski, Klein there first. Gediura heads forward again towards Majewski. He lays it off for Reed first time. Back in field to Majewski. Good stuff from Forrest again. 25 yards out. Majewski trying one. Didn't curl. Went straight. And so it went well wide in the end with his right boot. 25 yarder and three or four yards wide. Just needed to curl in and didn't. Four minutes gone. Very bright start from Forrest though. Nil nil. Here's Gediura. Gediura switching it across to this near side the left for Cunningham in space midway inside the Palace half Reed just in field of him Cunningham chips towards the back post headed towards goal from Blackstock and a decent save from Spironi not huge amount of power on the header from Blackstock but it was a very good cross from Cunningham from the left and it found Blackstock in far too much space and Spironi dived away to his left and held on to it and now here's Lynch forward towards Reed. Reed gives it to Cunningham, midway inside the Palace half, forward again towards Majewski, lays it straight back to Reed. bit of space for Reed to cross if he wants to, little ball infield again to Majewski, Majewski jinks away from two, shoots across the face of goal and only a yard wide, Spironi may have had it covered, he was scrambling a bit, and we were right behind it and had a good view of it, and uh, Majewski with his left foot just got a little bit too much on it this time, and dragged it across the face of goal and just wide of the far post, but good build-up play again. Paddy McCarthy chips it forward, right-footed. Look at Garvin arriving, edge of the penalty area and turning it wide in space. Nobody tracked whack with him. Owen Garvin was picked out by McCarthy, having made a run half the length of the pitch. And he brought down McCarthy's long ball edge of the box and then dragged his shot wide with a gaping hole in the middle of the Forest defence. Exploited, thankfully not to its greatest extreme, by Owen Garvin. There seem to have been a lot of long balls played into the opposition's half from both sides that have just caught the defenders out. Good touch here by Murray to Zaha down the left wing. Zaha tricking his way into the penalty area. Faced by Gunter, low ball in. And uh, Chambers, uh, rather Lynch it is, and Camp go down low at the near post. Uh, Lynch there as cover in case Camp missed it. Camp didn't miss it and got to it. Here's Owen Garvin, former Ipswich player, chipping it up towards the back post and headed away by Moosey and Forrest look to break. This is Reed with Majewski running ahead of him, rolls it infield towards McCleary. McCleary now gives it Majewski who's onside. Despite the fans' protestations, he cuts into the penalty area, beats a man, shoots into the net, beating the goalkeeper at his near post. High into the roof of the net, Raddy Majewski scores a very, very good goal virtually no angle for him at all a fourth goal of the season for the Polish international crashes Forest in front here at Selhurst Park seven minutes into the second half
Palace fans are calling for offside against Majewski when the ball was played to him by McCleary. We are bang in line with it, and he never, ever was. And Majewski did the rest. He had an awful lot to do, cut into the penalty area and slammed it into the roof of the net. It's Crystal Palace nil, Forest 1. Reed caught in possession as he tries to clear but then Chris Martin has played a very hopeful ball down the right hand side Jonathan Williams battling hard to keep it alive and wins a corner Forrest not really alert to the danger of the young substitute Jonathan Williams who wouldn't give up a lost cause Forrest leading 1-0 corner though to Crystal Palace Garvin takes left footed in swinging back post it's headed away well by McCleary only as far as Moxie who turns it back towards goal and wide of the target just dragged his left foot round it too much got too much on it and it was a couple of yards wide goal kick 1-0 Forest lead free kick Forest wide on their right hand side yeah, Moxley just running straight into the back of Dexter Blackstock and then he's, he looks at the referee as if well, what have I done <laughs> Andy Reid standing over it left footed curling cross header from Lynch and saved by Spironi it was straight at him it's a good effort from Lynch who uh, scored against Brighton the other day but as a former Brighton player I'm sure he'd like to score here as well and uh, almost did so Garvin 10 yards into his own half of the field now forward towards Jonathan Williams Williams scampering forward Lynch gets a good challenge in and now it's uh, Moosey finding Gunter and Gunter clears away to Blackstock that's a good flick from Blackstock to get McCleary in down the right hand side McCleary though loses his footing as he uh, tries to skip away from Parr I think he thought he was fouled and now I think he's cramped up he has cramped up Gareth McCleary and the home fans don't like the fact that he stayed down with uh, nothing much uh, no sort of contact really from Parr but he's clearly reaching for his uh, boots is Gareth McCleary to kind of pull his toes back as if he's cramped up in the calves but jogging back to halfway now and Forrest win it back again on halfway and this is Andy Reid 1-0 the Reds lead Majewski with the goal here's Gediura giving it to Reid uh, close passing as now here's Moosey finding McCleary looks okay he's having a run he shoots and it's deflected and down goes Spironi to his left and makes again another fairly comfortable catch and save certainly from his point of view but here's McCleary again given the ball by Moosey now Majewski top of the D he hits a shot he's not going to keep that one out Raddy Majewski with a belter from the edge of the D curls it right footed inside Spironi's left hand post and Majewski has a brace at Selhurst Park and our forest poised to move even further clear of the relegation zone tonight Palace nil, Forest two. Majewski has both of the goals, both in the second half, and safety edges ever, ever closer. Forest two nil up at Crystal Palace. Both the goals scored by Raddy Majewski in the second half. Chris Martin forward for Palace, who are having a decent spell of possession, taking on Lynch down the right flank. Lynch dives in and uh, wins the challenge, but concedes the corner. Palace have had more attacking opportunities and corners and free kicks in the last well since they went 2-0 down than I think they had in the rest of the game yeah, and that one that was a rash one from Lynch as well um, again Palace taking the shortish corner it's given back to Garvin to hit it in low right through the six yard box again and no touch from anybody and all the way through for a goal kick all along the ground from Owen Garvin and how nobody got a touch well, I can't tell you here's Moosey wide right 20 yards out Gidiura wants it he's in all sorts of space inside the D Reed instead threads it through the right hand side for Gunter Gunter's ball back for Majewski on a hat trick curls it in Raddy Majewski's got three good build up again lovely ball threaded through for Chris Gunter who kept his head and squared it back and Raddy Majewski who has had to wait such a long time to make an impact on this season turned it from his right foot to his left and curled it inside the far post and it's Forrest and Majewski who have three and Crystal Palace fans up and leave Forrest three goals and three points closer to staying in the championship and what an afternoon for Raddy Majewski a second half hat-trick it's Palace nil Forrest three is Zaha getting in behind Cunningham tight angle goal back for Crystal Palace no flags up would probably have gone in anyway 
And the man sliding in was Jermaine Easter, who turned it in from about a yard out. And the goal has been ruled out because the flag is up because Easter was offside. Now, I'm not sure he had to touch it at all. I think that was going in from Zaha. And if he'd allowed it to go in, then the flag would not have gone up. Maybe it was going wide, actually. We've just seen the benefit of a replay. But the flag's up for offside against Easter. Won't count. Forrest still lead 3-0. Here's Jonathan Williams, though. Forrest a bit ragged defensively at the moment. This is Zaha turning, top of the D. Lays it off for Dickachoy. He gives it square to Garvin. Forrest getting their shape back, but here's uh, Easter in again and shoots just wide. Little touch from Zaha was a clever little touch. And Jermaine Easter turned. I think Forrest thought he was offside again, but Easter turned and may just have grazed the outside of the post as he's turned this one towards goal after a clever touch from Zaha. Yeah, did touch the outside of the post and away to safety. And Forrest just riding their luck here, having gone 3-0 ahead, playing the 90th minute at Selhurst Park. Forrest here, last day of last season. But a 3-0 win. They lead by the same score again today. This is Chris Gunter. Curling one from the edge of the penalty area. Far wide of Julian Speroni's right-hand post. I think Speroni had it covered. Left-footed effort from Chris Gunter. And as the full-time whistle goes here at Selhurst Park, Forest edge closer to safety. It's another three points towards the magic 50-point mark. Forest move up to 43 with a three-goal second-half burst. All of them scored by Raddy Majewski. Three very good goals hit by Raddy Majewski. Three very, very good points away from home. It's a seventh away win of the season for the Reds this afternoon. And it means that should results stay as they are elsewhere, they will move another point closer to safety to six points clear of the relegation zone in the championship. It finishes here at Selhurst. Crystal Palace nil, Forest three.